In Unit 1A2, we're going to take that computer apart a little bit more and talk about some of the other components inside the computer, specifically long-term storage and how you're going to store all these huge video files that you're going to need on your computer. Let's talk about drives first. A hard, a hard disk or a hard drive is a way to permanently store data that you want to keep for, um, for more than just the one time that you're using the computer. Those come in two different kinds. An external drive is outside of the computer. It's a box sitting next to the computer that you can see. Whereas an internal hard drive, it's the exact same hard drive, but this time it's hidden inside the box, the computer um, uh, case, so that you don't see the drive. And um, we need our hard drives to be both big and fast because video production requires lots of data. You're going to learn a little bit later just how much data that means, but for now, all you need to know is your hard drive needs to be um, really big and fast so that you can quickly move all that data back and forth between the CPU, where you're processing the data, and the drive, where you're storing the data. Here's a couple of rules for how to use hard drives in video production. First of all, keep in mind, all hardware will fail eventually. That wonderful disk that you spent so much money on will eventually fail, and you want to go ahead and plan now for that. Therefore, you're going to back it up. You want to make copies of your uh, projects as you're working on them as often as possible, and in a perfect world, those backups would be remote so that the disk that you're backing up to is not in the same location as the computer. And that way, if a tornado comes through and destroys the computer um, that's got your project on it, you've got a backup somewhere remote. That becomes more important in the professional world where projects can uh, have big budgets with lots of money and you can't have the risk of something going wrong from one catastrophe. Okay, you also, if you can, would like to have redundancy in your system where multiple drives are used to store the data. I'll get into how that's going to work in a few minutes. Um, but uh, another important rule is to try to keep the data where you save the project separate from the drive where you store the system, if at all possible. As you know, computers crash. All computers fail uh, sometimes, and if the disk that has all your operating system and all your applications on it fails, it would be nice if the separate disk had the project on it. So if necessary, you could just pull that disk out of the computer and connect it to a different computer and you'd be back up and running again. So it's nice to try to keep the project separate from the computer. You'd also like to have a disk that's relatively quiet. If you're going to be editing video for eight straight hours, you don't want to listen to the hum of a fan that whole time. And some portability is good if you've got a disk that can go out into the field with you or that you can bring with you in a variety of circumstances, then you're okay. And just look out for those falling drives. Whatever you do, you don't want to drop that disk like I just did where you're going to break it. And uh, portable disks have that challenge. Let's talk about some specific different kinds of hard drives you're likely to see in today's environment. First of all, you've got that traditional drive. Inside that traditional drive, and I've taken a picture of this one so you can look at its guts, there is a metallic disk that literally holds all the data as a magnetic um, recording on the disk. And there's a little needle, kind of like the old record days, that literally reads the data or writes the data to that disk. Now, today's hard drives spin very, very fast, and that uh, reader can move very fast on it, but it's still a reasonably fragile system. You've got spinning plates in there. Um, also, traditional hard drives are pretty slow. Uh, they're not that fast at moving data back and forth between the drive and the computer, but they are really good for backups because they are cheap. Um, if you drop one of these things, it's going to break, so be really careful with your traditional hard drives. Now let's move on to SSD drives. These are a little bit newer on the scene. Basically, an SSD drive looks like a hard drive on the outside, but on the inside, it's just a whole bunch of computer memory. Just like if you were holding a flash drive in your hand or those, those memory cards that you buy, it's just like a giant memory card, except for it looks like a disk on the outside, so you can plug it in the same way you would a disk. SSDs are fantastic because they are super fast. You can really um, speed up a system by putting an SSD in there. They're also super quiet. Um, there's no moving parts. And I should mo mention that they can tolerate a wider range of temperatures, hot and cold. And if you drop them, they're less likely to break because there's no moving parts. All this comes at a price, of course. SSDs are very expensive. They hopefully will become cheaper as time goes on, but as of the time I'm recording this, they cost a lot more than traditional drives. 
Here's a third option called a RAID drive, and RAID is when you have multiple drives all linked together into one system. So you can see this box right here has got one, two, three disks all inside of it. You can just see that there's a disk poking out right there that slides in on a little tray. The advantage of RAID is that it is fast. You can have data writing or reading from all the disks at once, and that speeds up the system quite a lot. It's also redundant. If you set up the RAID properly, then the data can be duplicated on more than one drive. So let's say I've got my project saved on my big RAID here, and then one of my drives fails. Drive B right here goes bad. Well, if I've set it up to be redundant, I can pull drive B out, put in a new drive B, and the RAID will automatically repair itself. It'll copy all the backed up data from the other disks back onto the new drive B, and I'm back in business. One uh, dead disk did not slow me down too much. So RAIDs are also nice. They're super fast and they're redundant. And here's a nice chart that's showing you some different speeds of drives. Speeds are important, so when you're looking at the drive that you want to buy, Pay attention to whether it's FireWire or USB or eSATA or um, these new Thunderbolt drives that are coming along. Each of these has completely different speeds, and that speed is going to really be uh, potentially a bottleneck for you if you're trying to edit a big complicated project with a slow disk. This is the difference. A old FireWire 400 interface only has 50 megabytes per second. Uh, a slightly newer FireWire 800 will get you up to 100 megabytes per second. But if you can find a disk that has an eSATA 3 interface and your computer has an eSATA 3 interface, you're up to 300 megabytes per second. And if you've got the, the, the money and the computer to buy a Thunderbolt, a Thunderbolt drive, you're just going to be screaming along. You'll be very happy. Here's what some of those connections look like. And uh, these are cables that you probably see lying around, but look carefully to make sure you get the difference. A USB 2 cable, USB 3 looks just the same, except for it's gonna have a little symbol up here that says fast or 3.0 or something. Here's a FireWire 800 connection. There's an eSATA connection. Here's a Thunderbolt connection. So how fast is the drive that you're currently working right now? Well. Ask your teacher. Your school may or may not have had the funds to put together a really fast system for you, but it might be interesting to take a moment to learn about the system that you're working on and what its speeds or limitations are.